Another round of applause for Dino. Keep it going for Dino. So I dated a blonde girl for a while. She was a nice person. But anytime she was scatterbrained, she just used that as an excuse. So one time she was balancing her checkbook and she was clearly frustrated and she just goes, Ugh, oh, I'm having a blonde moment. That's not a thing. Yeah. Like your hair color doesn't seep down into your brain and affect things. You're just buying into something that society says of you. That's like if in the same conversation she asked me, Hey, what's 12 times 13? And I'd be like, 156. And she'd be like, how'd you get that so quickly? But, oh, just having an Indian moment. Yeah. <laughs> like my skin color just emanates mathematics, what can I do? <laughs> I am Indian, I'm sure I came up here and some of you were like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and I actually did a show here, uh, and it was at the old room and I got off stage and there was an older African-American gentleman uh, to the left, and he grabbed me by the arm as I got off stage, and he pulled me in, and he goes, I thought you were a black guy. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry? <laughs> How am I supposed to react to that? And my buddy was at the show that night, and he's like, hey, let's go have a drink at the bar over there. So we go over to the bar, and they're having karaoke. Uh, so my buddy convinces me to sing a song, and I sing Rex and Effects Rump Shaker. <laughs> And I can assure all of you, based off that performance, no one at that bar thought I was a black guy. <laughs> so I do comedy, but I also work in an office. Uh, and on occasion, I'll bring in donuts to work. So I brought in donuts to the morning meeting, and everyone at the meeting started applauding. Like more applause than all of you gave me when I got introduced to <laughs> Suddenly we were having layoffs at my job, and now everybody gets uh, concerned when layoffs are happening. I was concerned about my job. So I went up to my coworker, and I'm like, oh my god, I might lose my job. And she goes, oh no, you're donut guy. I'm like, that's not my job title here. But maybe that's the new affirmative action, yeah? You're at a job interview, and then you just go, hey, I'll bring donuts in on occasion. And then later they're evaluating candidates, and I'm like, these are two equal candidates. Oh, but this guy said he'd bring in donuts. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go with that. So I have a dog. Her name is Kala. She is wonderful. She's one and a half years old. Uh, but when I first got her, it was a problem because every time I had to go on the road to do comedy, I had to take her to a kennel. So I took her to this kennel for the first time, and at the end of the stay, they gave me a report card to tell me how she did. So out of five dog tails, Kala got four dog tails. So I'm looking at the comments that Kenel left for me, and they said, Kalo is a very sociable dog. She got along well with all the other dogs. So I looked at Kalo, and I'm just like, why didn't you get five dog to this? And then I was just like, oh my god, I've become my parents. <laughs> we were just seconds away from me being like, you think you're gonna get into medical school with four dog tails? I was more of a three dog tail student, which is why I'm up here. <laughs> so my father is actually blind. Uh, as a result, he has a bunch of things to help him out with his blindness. One of them is a watch where you click on the button, it tells him the time. So I took him to a doctor's appointment that he had a few months ago. We're sitting in the waiting room. He clicks the button on the watch and it goes, the time is 10.05 p.m. And then my dad goes, ah, 9.30 a.m. <laughs> Wait a minute, the watch doesn't tell you the right time? And then my dad goes, yeah, but then you subtract 12 and a half hours and you get the right time. And I'm like, what? Just give me the watch, you know? So I start winding the watch, winding the watch, nothing seems to be happening. After five minutes, I hand it back to him. He clicks the button on it and it goes, the time is 10, 10 p.m. So the only thing I managed to change was the machine voice went from a man to a woman, which we don't need at all. So my dad goes, oh, click the button a second time. So I click it a second time and it goes, Today is June 8th, 2008. <laughs> what? This is years off. So I go to my dad, so what? Tomorrow's going to be June 9th, 2008? And then my dad goes, oh no. Every day is June 8th, 2008. <laughs> so my dad is stuck in some blind version of the movie Groundhog Day. 
Where's the tune over and over again? My extended family knows I do comedy, and that's all they know about me. So anytime I see them, we talk about comedy, and that's about it. So it was at this family get-together, and my uncle was there, and he asked me, how's comedy going? And I said, it's going good. And then he goes, I have a joke for you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He goes, do you know Indian history? I'm like, oh my god, this joke's gonna be terrible. <laughs> Yeah, I know Indian history. He's like, okay, so do you know who the Mughals are? I'm like, yeah, the Mughals are a tribe that existed in India. There are still some Mughals today in India. He goes, okay. So a man needs to go find something. So a man goes to a Mughal to go find it. So then the Mughal goes to try and find it, but the Mughal cannot find it. So then the Mughal comes back to the man and says, I could not find that. So then the man goes to his friend and says, I sent a Mughal to go find something, but he could not find it. So then the man's friend says to the man, oh, you don't go to a Mughal to go find something, you go to Google. <laughs> That's it, everybody. That's the joke. It's just a rhyme. <laughs> So I politely laugh, then five seconds pass, and my uncle goes, you may have that. <laughs> That's one thing to tell me a terrible joke. That's another thing to act like, have fun on The Tonight Show now. <laughs> like, this is a man who's a retired engineer from Chrysler. That's like if in the same conversation, I grabbed a Hot Wheels car, put it down in front of him, and went, you may have that. <laughs> this is what you do, right? Here's the thing. Uh, my uncle told me that joke with the hope that I would share it with an entire crowd of people. So congratulations, funny bone. You all just had that. And that's it for me, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a great night.